Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Um, so you guys know what Castlevania is? Uh, don't look at these. These are lies. Yeah, we'll do that. And I'll do casual since I'm just on baby mode. And because I'm recording. There was once a man who had been given the moon's curse by demons. That man was Zangetsu. My cat's going nuts. Wrapped in crimson gar with eyes like fire, he relentlessly pursued the demons who cursed him as he journeyed from one pit of darkness to another. Vengeance, please. He would stop at nothing until he struck down every last demon in his path. One night he sensed the looming presence of a great demon. He swore to eradicate all demons, no matter how much of a threat they posed. Bathed in moonlight, he cried out as he drew his sword, which consumed the darkness from within its wretched steel. On that night, either the demons or the moon itself would feel the wrath of his blade. just got this picture of myself over here because I need to fill the void because otherwise we get weird stuff. Oh yeah, I can speed this up. Oh fuck, that's so good. All right, let's boogie. For those who don't know, Castlevania is a NES game from the 80s. It's known for being really hard. Yeah, it's known for being really hard and for starting the whole Castlevania franchise. It's really, really good. I need to emphasize that it's a really good game. Um, however, it's owned by Konami. And for those who don't know, Konami has a uh, tawdry reputation. Um, they, in fact, may be owned by the Yakuza. So, you know, that's a thing. So, the as often happens with stuff like this, uh, especially with Konami stuff, um, the guys left the company in the same way that, um, in the same way that Hideo Kojima left Konami so he could go work on Death Stranding for himself. Uh, I think his name is Igarashi. I forget his first name, but I know that his last name's I his family name, I believe, is Igarashi. Fuck. Igarashi left to go work on his own stuff. So he left Konami. And originally, what he wanted to do was make a game that was like everyone's favorite Castlevania game. Which is called Symphony of the Night. However, he got a... Um, there was a stretch goal on his Kickstarter... to just, like, make this game. So this game looks just like Castlevania 3 and plays like it too. This game was a Kickstarter stretch goal. The whole game was made as a stretch goal. Which is kind of interesting, right? Um, the game that actually came out is called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. And it's pretty good. However, I actually really, really like this. And I've been meaning to play some Castlevanias on the channel, so I decided I will. And so I am. So yeah, here we're playing as Zangetsu. Zangetsu is... has a color palette that matches Simon and Trevor Belmont's in Castlevania 1 and 3. 
Um, in Castlevania 2, Simon has... This is the whole thing. Let me let me talk about this some more. So, you can see that I've been using my sub-weapons. Originally in Castlevania, sub-weapons require hearts to use. This is the probably the only game where hearts are not... Um, like health, but ammunition for your sub-weapon. Because your normal attack is okay. Like, the sword is good and it does a lot of damage, but it only does so much and it only has so much range. It also takes a... Actually, no, the sword doesn't do that. But the sword can only hit directly in front of me. Which is a problem. However, I don't need to worry about that with other weapons. The ball and chain, which is one of Zangatsu's some weapons, allows him to hit uh, up and above him, diagonal. And the uh, other thing, the little flames, allows him to throw a little, uh, to throw a little, I'm trying to think, but nothing's happening. Sorry, everyone. Uh, to throw a little, like, purification thing, a little on Miyoji. Because he's, like, a samurai, so all this stuff is, like, Japanese. But yeah, so Zangetsu works similar to Trevor and Simon Belmont in that he has the same orange and gray art style. And you can see that the, the color palette of Trevor, or of Zangetsu rather, fits the world very well because the world has a lot of blues in it. So the big orange really stands out well. Um, in Castlevania, Simon and Trevor have access to... I should really explain more about what Castlevania is about. Castlevania is about the Belmont family. There's a whole, like, big, long line of them. This is fun. So th that's a mechanic from Castlevania Dracula X, I believe, where they have this, where bosses will attack you with this one, like, big suicide attack. And it can't actually kill you. It can just reduce your life, which reduces your score, which means you might not get extra life. So it's a way to fuck you over. <laughs> All right. So this is a mechanic from Castlevania 3. Party members, thank you for saving me. Was it the demon's power you used to seal that beast? You, you're a shard binder. That power can summon four demons at will, and I cannot allow that. Wait, it is true I'm a shardbinder. However, I have sworn to be ever righteous in my command of this power. I refuse to be used for evil. Then show me proof of that determination in battle. Miriam has become an ally. I will skip these because I know how to do it already. But you can see we've got Miriam's picture up there. But yes, Castlevania is about fighting Dracula. Um, and this one family has sworn to do it. So Simon Belmont's the first one introduced to. Trevor Belmont is his ancestor. He's the first one to do it. Like to kill Dracula. Leon Belmont is the one before them. And they have a whip. And the whip looks like this. The Belmont whip, the vampire killer, looks like this thing. So you have this weird place where the main character, Zangatsu, looks more like Simon. But Miriam actually is the one who fights more like Trevor. Trevor and or Simon. They're largely identical. So you can see that the whip is a little slower to fire up. Because the sword is just like, bam, very quick. But this one has a lot more range. You can see we cover a lot more of the screen. As opposed to this, which can only touch that brick. This goes all the way over there. To that brick. Um... 
In addition, Miriam has a higher jump. So while he can barely clear that, she can really pound that. And Zengetsu has to get really close to guys like that to deal with their shield. But she can just stand away and whip. So I actually like playing as Miriam more than I like playing as Zengetsu. Zengetsu's main use is... Uh, the all the damage he can do. Sorry, just figuring out this knight. So Miriam has those and that. Those are her sub weapons. Um, all the sub weapons in this game are references to other Castlevanias. So Zengatsu's use of the ball and chain is like the whip that normally the main character would have, but in this case, Miriam has it. Zengetsu being a cool demon guy with a sword is possibly a reference to Alucard, but there is a even more alucard character in this game. Um, Miriam having a weapon that attacks diagonally like these triple knives, is the most similar to the axe from the classic Castlevanias. Yep. The ball and chain is kind of like nothing, but this thing, the holy paper, is similar to the holy water. And you can see that there's actually different ways for every character to deal with this. Because Zangetsu can throw holy water. Holy paper, sorry. Whereas Miriam hip, can just crouch and whip it. Zangetsu can't possibly reach. Because you can see that they annoyed a lot of damage. So one thing about um, Castlevania that carries over to Bloodstained is that... Um, there, you don't control your jump. Like in Mario, which had already come out by the time of Castlevania, you were able to like slide around and control your jump arc. Whereas in this game, you don't do that. God, I'm getting distracted. Pardon me, everyone. Uh, the dagger, the little knife that Miriam throws, is a thing that Simon has access to. It's the worst weapon in the game, but it's one of the only range attacks, and it has a pretty decent range itself, so... However, this allows me to just... ignore those things. Which is good, because they're problems. Fuck. But yeah, by the time that Castlevania had come out, there were already video games with jump physics. Whereas in this game, you can see that if you jump, you always have the same arc, no matter what. So because she fell into a pit, Miriam is now dead forever. And if she were alive, I could actually hop up there, I think. Or no, I think you need Jibble. Jibble. So you can see that same deal, we can just toss this guy. And they even give you some of it to help you along. Ah, oh, fuck. Hold on, everyone. I know it looks very, very appealing, but... Come on. So I'm in casual mode, which means that I can die easily and it won't, like, kill me. I mean... Come on. It... it Sorry, that was a stupid thing to say. There we go. I can die and it won't take limited lives away. Normally that is how it would work. Oh yeah, there's this thing. So this is based off the combat cross. Goes away and comes back. 
So it hits things twice. It's fantastic. I can also hit those fellas up there. Yep. See, if you've seen the original Castlevania at all, this looks just like it. So there's a thing we haven't talked about. If you crouch and then jump as Miriam, you do a little slide. This allows you to pit through gaps that are only one block wide and too small for most characters to fit through. Um, there is another way. And you can see that now I have 50 out of 50 hearts. They're not hearts. It's just magic water in this game. So it's a very classic Castlevania thing. Anyway, the jump arc. Um, the reason that Castlevania still has a jump arc in a game where, like, that's kind of outmoded and, like, you don't need a jump arc anymore is very intentional. See, the thought process is... I don't want that. It's fantastic and it's really cool, but I don't need that right now. Anyway, the idea of the jump arc is to give your character a moveset. Second boss. If I die here, I'll end the episode. So with that high jump, I'm really easily able to clear that. And then he shoots down those things. That's so cool. So I believe Zangatsu actually does more damage. Which is useful in boss fights because, hello. He also has the most health. So you can see that Zangatsu has a little problem. So if I switch between my characters effectively, I don't need to worry about dying. Yeah, come on, bring it on. There you go. Okay. Fuck. Damn. Ah, well. See that again, that big, like, suicide glory attack. So we're picking up a character that you'd think I would like more. But I have reasons for not liking him. That I would be defeated by a demon. I've been thoroughly humiliated. I am Alfred, an alchemist. So yeah. An alchemist. You use demons to fulfill your worldly desires. Every achievement requires a fair exchange. Even using demons is sometimes necessary. You have your own goals, correct? My power may be of use to even you. Your existence is unsettling to me, but your skills are not without value. I'll leave your head where it is for now. Alfred has become an ally. So, now we have him. So you can see that his life is miserable. Oops. His attack is terrible. But he's got some stuff. Which we'll see next time. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Thanks for coming by. See ya.